I'm Nikki Colton. And I'm Chad Dillon. And this, this is the, the Unica Rally, Rally Cross, Cross Series. Coming at you live for your sixth race here at the Blackpool Circuit in England. I'm having a great weekend. <laughs> I love England. It's a great day. I, it's been a long time since we've been in the Rally Cross Series. We took a little break and vacation. We're back. Yes, we are ready and, uh, to race. Yeah, we got quite the event here today. This is your entry list as it goes past the screen. A lot of top notch drivers and a couple of new faces in the crowd today. Yeah, they decided to come in the series, early, but, but they still have the chance because it's only the sixth race, so having 14 or more races to go, still got enough ground to cover. Yep, and the first car up today is going to be the driver that upset at Everglades, Emily Michaels for RG Motorsports. Emily Michaels, you know, one of those drivers, you know, it's the, one, the only girl dri racer in this series, and she is pretty dominant. She is, she is very good, very, very good. Yes, Emily Michaels. I think she's going to have a long career in this series. Uh, if we go based oh. on Everglades, now you look through that giant loop de loop we yes. just went through. Yeah. That's the main feature of the Blackpool course. But you see, this is a very this is a, this is a very interesting course, in my opinion. This is one of the more monumental loops. Um, if you can conquer that loop, oh, she, now she hit the yep, she hit the ridge there. Now well, here's the thing. That loop gives you a lot of speed, but if you go too fast on it, you could crash right into the wall, which she kind of did, but she held herself together. Yes, now we're going to have to worry and see if a uh, driver is not going to get enough speed going down that loop. They might have some trouble. Yes, yeah, you might be able to flip over. You might, there might be a lot of injuries, especially if you don't have enough momentum. Yes, we hope this won't be another uh, Hong Kong scenario oh, from boy. last year. We don't yeah. even want to remember Hong Kong. But uh, here we go. Uh, Michael's in. finishing up the run. And she's going to get a 58-70 just under a minute time. She's the first car out, so she gets the bonus point. Tyler Benoit is your second car out who's having a dominant season. Yes, yes, he's already has two race wins, and he is feeling it. He is doing very good. Yeah, I'm very impressed with how Tyler Benoit is running this year. Last season, he made slight impact, but uh, not, nothing too major. But this year, he's showing he's going to be an all-out competitor. He's showing that, you know, I think he's been more fo putting more focus on the Rallycross than um, Utica Home Track Series. He's realizing he's got more of a strength in Rallycross Series in this season. So, I think he's more focused on this. Yeah, as you can see with the Utica Home Track Series, he did not have an especially good year. No. Never was really Especially that he's not into the, in a Myrtle race at all. He did not make it to the final race, so his main focus now is Rallycross, and you're going to see a lot more dominant racing. Yes, uh, the Myrtle, they, a lot of these drivers just came from the Myrtle Beach race. They came from the heat events. This is happening before the final event happened, so we got the couple drivers that are running for the championship Ooh. running in this field, but as we see, finishing up, Todd Benoit at 56.81 takes the top spot, gives himself a bonus point. Next up is Thomas Beattie, one of the new drivers from Indiana Motorsports. He's looking to make a good impact, especially in Blackpool. It's a pretty good track, not especially for a new driver. You know, it's hard. Now, he's got a lot of weight on his shoulders because he's replacing the great Austin Ogo, yes. and a lot of fans were upset with the decision by Ogo to leave the series. Yes. But Beattie is going to have to try and prove himself. Now, I've heard a couple Ogo fans giving him a hard time before the race started. Well, you know what? See, the Ogo fans are no, they're used to Ogo not doing as well. He's just known for his memorabilia and how you know awesome his name is and stuff like that, which I'm still sad. We can't say the I'll go theme song, but um, let's go, BD. If BD can make a good strong, right now having a great run, but if BD can make a strong impact and do really good in the series, he might draw a little more attention from different fans. And the, you know, the Ogo fans they'll go away. They'll slowly go away. But well, they'll, they'll start. They may start all, to convert all, to them. All, but, uh, all seven billion of them will slowly go away. <laughs> you gotta give it time. And going like 55-15, he's gonna take the top spot. I think that might win over a couple fans as oh. Emil Michaels goes up on track. Now, I wanted to mention something before we get to Emil here. I was going to mention uh, with the team Indiana Motorsports, the last team that went up, they're really making an impact in both Utica Home Track Series and this series. Yes, yes. Yeah, one of the top upstart teams, in my opinion. I completely agree with you right there. But uh, getting back on track with Emil Michaels, he's up on track today. Now, it was, was announced that he's not going to run the full Utica Rallycross Series schedule. Oh, really? Yeah, they're gonna. He, it's switching uh, at the tenth race. Um, they're gonna have a couple of drivers rotating, like Joshua Michaels, Joseph Anesto. Oh, okay. I don't know. I forget exactly. I don't have my notes on me, but I'm not sure if drivers like Ray Tacky that might be coming in or not. Well, they, I mean, it's 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 good to see a bunch of new faces. You know, Rallycross is drawing a lot of new drivers' attention. And whoa, oh, whoa, whoa. whoa. Wait, it's a little grind there. Gets stuck between the crevice of the two guardrails. Hoping to get out of there, but it doesn't look like there's any openings. Yeah, there there aren't many uh, entrances to this race. He's going to have to try and find something. He's got to think quickly and creatively. He's losing a lot of time here. He's already basically slower than the other the other two drivers that already went up. Now, uh, he's hit most of the checkpoints. We'll just have to see. Yeah, I think he's hit all the checkpoints. He just has to head to the line. Oh, really? Yeah, oh. he's going to cross the line. Oh, a one, minute 15. Yeah. 
Ooh, that's not going to be a good time. The Michaels not having a good run. Now it's time for the Mighty Mighty Tiger, Chris Aurelia. We are Tigers. Bow, 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 the Mighty Mighty Tigers. As he takes on the loop-de-loop right here. And, whoa, oh. he's a little wonky, as they say in England. <laughs> a little wonky. <laughs> Look at how British I am. <laughs> oh, uh, shut up. <laughs> Oh, we're just going to lose fans, British fans, by the second from that one. We had British fans? <laughs> well, no. Whoa, look at this move by uh, Chris Arilla. He's going to circumvent that ridge, and he's just going to try and jump on there. Here comes the Trem Center here. He, this is what happens. At every race event, there's always a loophole to a track, and whoever sets it, they'll they'll do it first. They might do it not as good, but those next drivers, this shows that there's probably going to be a three-second drop or a four-second drop after that race, after this event. And oh, Whoa, get the turn. mighty, mighty Spiders <laughs> did a mighty, mighty spin. That was great. Yes, he did. You were mentioned with oh, the wait, other drivers. Oh. Great. It was great. <laughs> oh, you're so witty, Chad. Oh, thank you. 59, 13, slower than the rest of the... <laughs> <laughs> the times there, despite the shortcut, but he had a lot of trouble. Joseph Bryan on track right now, and he's been really making some strides this year. He is, and he's one of those drivers that I always had hope in for, you know, middle-of-the-pack drivers really coming out this season. And whoa, look at the speed coming <laughs> off that <laughs> man. He's really been going it now. Joseph Vanesto, um, no, not Joseph Vanesto, Joseph Bryan. Yeah. <laughs> Joseph Vanesto is, you know, that's the future. We're looking that's the future. That's the future. Let's look at the present. Yeah. Joseph Bryan comes into this race with a lot of pressure from the Utica Home Track Series. He has to work his way into the top 35 in Utica Home Track Series. He has mm -hmm. to finish 17 spots ahead of last place, which yes. is difficult to do at Myrtle Beach. It is. So he's coming in here with a heavy heart. I'm not sure if that will affect his performance or make it better. Well, right now, looking pretty smooth, you know, very, very, very calm, very, um... How you say? Uh, oh, look, he's going to get uh, tripped up right there near the end. Yeah, a little bit, but, you know, it's not going to kill him too much. Calm, man. cool, collect. 55-81. That's going to be the second fastest time. Great run by him. It looks like it's not going to affect him too badly. No, not at all. Thomas Beattie still being the leader. Now up is Michael Aurelio now. Chris Aurelio having his run. You know, it's not bad. It was pretty pretty um, average. Um, Michael Aurelio hoping to get back. You know, he has had a normal average season, you know, compared to his last season last year, you know, he was pretty dominant. This season he's kind of in the middle. He's hoping to get back up in the top. The issue with Tom, Tom, uh, Michael Aurelio is uh, that he's been kind of in the situation of always the bridesmaid, never the bride. He's been run, runner-up several times this year. Yeah, he has. But and yeah. it's just been so close to victory. He keeps getting beaten out at the last second. But uh, he's having a really solid time right now. And I think this is the series that might get Michael Aurelio back into the public limelight because he was the rookie of the year for Utah Olympics. Everyone yes. was like, oh, man, this guy's going to win a championship next year. Funding issues, couldn't run the full schedule. That's the problem with both the Aurelio brothers. They've always had funding issues. And Oh, hit the corner there, but finishes with a 5377. <laughs> Looks like his, his brother um, paved the way for him to use that shortcut, and that yeah. really took some time That's off. That's what I'm saying. It would get two or three seconds drop every time that there's a shortcut set. They're going to have a pleasant family dinner tonight. <laughs> and Colin Bartell is driving the number 19 machine right now. Whoa! <laughs> Is uh, a little loose off That's that. That's scary, but the, you come off that loop, you have like you know you're, you're you're disoriented because when you're going upside down, it throws off your vision, throws off your center, center of balance. So when they come into straightaway and hit that sharp turn, you know they're not ready for it, especially the the rookie drivers this season. Now uh, I had a I went to a coffee shop with uh, Colin Bartell recently. I talked to him a bit, yeah, and uh, he's been really down in the dumps lately, especially with Utica Home Track Series. He's been having a rough season. He at the beginning of the year, it looked like he was going to win the championship. Mm -hmm. Then now he's like almost oh, out of oh, the top oh, 20. And things oh. are not going here. And Colin Bartell oh. hits the side of the track there and flips himself over. That is a shame for Colin Bartell. He was doing so well. Now we have another new driver, Daniel Voiles, replacing Billy Bishop. And I can see why Billy Bishop was replaced. They've had a lot of, the team has been having a lot of. Uh, Difference of interests <laughs> with you know, Billy Bishop. I, I'm kind of sad about the Billy Bishop going because he was always the laughter of the series, but he was having a pretty good comeback season. He was having a pretty consistent... He was actually running sixth in points, yeah, but he, it looks like the team oh, couldn't oh, stand him. No. <laughs> they just let him go. I mean, would you want to be his boss? I mean, of course, if someone went down the mountain as many times as Billy Bishop did, I'm pretty sure I'd get pretty angry. Cause you, know how many, you know how many cars you went through? Oh, just ask uh, John Sadino. Oh, yeah. They, their budget, they almost went bankrupt because of Billy Bishop. Here's the thing. If Boyle, as long as he can go a whole race right now without going down a mountain, if he finds a mountain on this track, <laughs> I'll be surprised. But if he goes down a mountain, doesn't go down a mountain, 
The team's going to be happy. The team- yeah, and as you can see, Voyle's been playing this run really conservatively, been really creeping around there, very new to these cars. A minute oh, oh two. Oh, God. <laughs> he may- He's new to this car. Let him get a little warm-up. Wait, hold now- up, hold yep. up. Shh, shh, shh. I'm just... It's the Black Mamba. Matt the- Evans. The Black Mamba. <laughs> Matt Evans. One of the top drivers in this sport, one of the most popular in yeah, this series. Yeah, so he's probably as well. the most winning driver out of any re- um, any series in the Utica Home Track Series circuit and anything that deals yeah, with Yeah, anything with the uh, Utica Home Track Series label. He's face, been doing good. Face, Seven wins yes. in the Utica Home Track Series. And he's going for a championship in the Myrtle Beach event when he he's is. done here. So It's his third time trying to do that, I'm pretty sure. I think it's his third uh, championship uh, attempt. Uh, no, um, in uh, 2011, he just barely just missed mar- a chance. Just barely missed it, yeah. He finished 10th in points that year. So uh, Matt Evans, really top-notch driver, really knows how to handle the wheel. And uh, you-, you can see a lot of the driving style oh, of his father in him. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, his father was an excellent driver at the dirt tracks especially, and he's going to cross the line with a 56-65. Yeah, pretty good time. Yeah, fourth place. Yeah. Not the best considering what Michael Aurelio ran, but... Now it's time for Captain Clutch, Ray Davis. Captain Clutch. I'm hoping to see a little more out of Ray Davis. You know, last season he was top of the points most of the season. You know, he was keeping himself up because that, cl- that clutchness he has. He's able to examine the... Uh, th- oh. Yeah, but there's a prime example here. Wreck you know. right into the wall for Ray Davis. The, the, I, you know, I think, I think that wreck last year at Dead Man's Curve really threw off his momentum. He's still carrying that with him because that lost him the championship. It did lose him the championship. He would have won a championship oh, if it had oh. not been for that, and this is not going to be a good run. Oh, he's got to do a, a little double backwards there. And, you see, the thing about Ray Davis is that he was always consistent with his driving, which kept him top of the points, and then when he hit that one that one ending, it threw off his whole momentum, his mojo. And not a lot of people can be consistent like Ray Davis. So when you get thrown off like that, you can never get back on. You know, it's really hard. It's like getting thrown off a train. It's really hard to get back on. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of injuries. Yes. Just like the <laughs> theory. But uh, Ray Davis, he's given it his all, and he's he's quite the success story as a driver. He, he is. He's overcome adversity. He's become a successful Ooh. driver. Poor time today, but I think if he can get if he can get that momentum back, he should be a strong proponent in the series. Now it's time for Jake Williams, this, car number 10. This is my man. This is my man, Jake Williams. <laughs> I picked Jake Williams. I said this comment. I'm going to hold, stay hopeful. Jake Williams is going to win the championship. Sure, Tyler Benoit is dominant this series. Jake Williams, with his rookie prowess, is going to come out and really be a good driver. I'm glad you have faith in him. He has very low Vegas odds, I can tell you that. Yeah. As, uh, Jake Williams has never won a race before, and uh, he hasn't been in many series. All I've seen him in is... Uh, the Road Racing Challenge Cup. Oh, hit that that cheat perfectly. Yeah, this is co- becoming a good run. Maybe uh, Chad isn't so crazy after oh, all. Oh, I'm not crazy. Don't you worry about that. Look at this. Jake Williams doing a great job on this loop as we head through the oh, final section of the track. Oh, turns. Hit that straightaway perfectly. Now all he's going to do is hit this turn while hitting the corner. Oh, my goodness. This run, run is flawless. This is looking great. Wow. And a 52-81 going to... Put Michael Aurelio down a notch, and now William Duncan's up on track. Yes, William Duncan. William Duncan. And the ironic thing is, he's the favorite to win the Utica Home Track Series championship. Well, yeah, he's the favorite to lose the Utica Valley <laughs> Cross Series. Yeah, there's not much hope oh. in this year. It, it's just a different style of race car. Maybe he just can't get used to these type of vehicles. You know, but the thing is, I, I, I've had interviews with him. I've had, you know, I've, I've talked to him before, you know, he's kind of a good friend of mine. He loves doing the rally cross, though. He loves, he has fun every week. It's just, he's more focused on the um, home track series, you know. It's kind of like with Tyler Benoit. He's, he's doing very well in the rally cross series because he realized he doesn't have to worry as much about home track series because the season, it's over, and he didn't do as well, so he better, better focus on something he's actually doing really good at. Yeah, I'm also kind of curious, now that you mentioned Tyler Benoit, like, what is his go- going to be his plans next year? If he's even going to attempt Utica home track series at all, or if he wants to go back in there and uh, step into the ring. We'll see. Yeah, maybe he'll get rid of his family. It just did not help him whatsoever. <laughs> 57-43, not going to be a top five run for him, but we didn't expect it. Kevin White, the White Mamba, on the racetrack right now. The White Mamba, looking to make the Black Mamba sad and cry. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Kevin White, I mean, a friendly face around the track, he's very systematic with his approach. He's always going to the track. I always see him by his car, and he's making sure everything's correct down there. He's one of those drivers, he works under the hood. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he's working with. with exactly. Vehicle. He yeah. knows how to drive it. You know, there's a lot of people that have, you know, he's kind of the people, ooh. Oh, oh close call. But for... it did not affect him that much because it, it already gives him some time. So he might be... If he can do the rest of this run pretty cleanly, 
I'll have a good run. It's going to be hard to beat uh, Jake Williams. Oh, but, uh, flawless. He didn't hit ex- a single. <laughs> excellent run by him. But uh, Kevin White having a decent run at the moment in this vehicle that uh, a lot of people weren't expecting him to be doing especially well. No, He was a unknown going into this year. Yep. And, and he finished it with a 54 Whoa, that's a <laughs> and that's a pretty good time. For yeah, my I'm, man, Kevin I'm, White. I'm pretty proud of that. And next up on track it is John Cittadino. And he's... Oh, God, John Cittadino. We don't need to talk about John Cittadino, do we? It isn't, it isn't like William Duncan, where at least um, he's going for a championship in another series. Things have just been bad all around for Cittadino. I mean, Cittadino. we should just let this, uh, let this run go by, and we'll just kind of talk about other things oh, like man. cookies. Yeah, have you ever uh, had any English cookies so far in this uh, excursion? I did. I also had some fish and chips. That was good. I, I've never had fish and chips before, but that was pretty decent. John said, you know, hitting a wall there. Never have any bangers and mash. <laughs> no, I, I think I should. I think I should. I was, you know, I was I was going around the city. I went to see Big Ben. Big Ben. That was fun. Oh yeah, uh, quite the clock I hear. It is a pretty big clock. It is a very very big <laughs> clock. It's always going dong, you know, but. Now, Richard Johnson happened to be on the scene at the exact same time. As yeah. well. Oh, oh, oh Johnson. and there's a reason we didn't comment yeah. at all, and he's out of this race, and at least he's going to beat uh, Bartell. But next up, it's time for uh, Dylan Young. He may just, be too young. <laughs> yeah, he's like same boat as Duncan and Sid, you know, just having an awful year. You know, but, you know, so, you know I always have hope because, remember, you got to remember, I say, this every, I say this every time there's a race. There's so many races this season, 20 races. They can still pick up the slack and really have a good season. I think Dylan Young's picking up the slack. Look at how he's powering through these yeah. turns. He just barely missed that wall. Let's see if he hits this. Just like Jake Williams, perfectly landed. And he's got a lot more speed than Jake Williams coming out of this wide turn here. This is looking pretty good. Now, Dylan Young has been having an awful season. He's been wrecked a lot yes. throughout these attempts. But it uh, wow, looks geez. like something's clicking here in England. Oh, the, the, the two rookies are going at it today. Let's see if Dylan Young can beat out Jake Williams, which we didn't think was going to be possible after now, that amazing run. Now, Dylan Young doesn't need to worry about the Merrill Beach race. He failed to qualify for that. His two brothers are going to be in there. But crossing the line, 52-72. That's going to put him on top of the charts, just barely beating Jake Williams. But a great time nonetheless. Alex Tanker is on track right now for Tanker Motorsports. Yes, the cream machine is going to glaze everything. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I got I to gotta mention his team. Tanker Motorsports is having a great weekend right now. At Myrtle Beach, all three of their drivers made the race, and one of their drivers, Brock McMahon, is going for a championship. Oh yeah, Brock McMahon. He's so, uh, the man. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Alex Tanker is going into this Utica Rallycross Series oh, race wait. kind of elated. He doesn't have to worry at all at Myrtle Beach because no. he's not winning a championship and he's not going to fall out of contention. So he can focus on maybe winning this race, getting himself in championship contention here. Exactly. That was a lot of words there, there. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you almost ran out of breath there. You need a glass of water or something? Oh, uh, no, no. Okay. I'm fine. <laughs> piece of, you want a piece of gum? Steve, can I have a piece of gum? Steve? Yeah, Steve's our gum guy. Thanks. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so... <laughs> Alex Tanker coming to the line here. Let's see how this run's going to go. 55.99. All right, not going to get the top five, but a pretty good run. Dom Caps, as you see the camera, needed to catch up there with him a little bit. With the decapitator. He's coming alive. Another driver going for you to call him Trek Series Championship, though he's more of an outside chance. Mm -hmm. Caps, I always have a lot of hope in Caps every week in the Rally Cross Series. He's consistent. He is consistent. He's kind of like the new... He's kind of like the... The baby version of Ray Davis, you know, he's got a consistent vibe to him. He's just got to get higher in points, and he's got to keep himself motivated and really stay on track. Like, Dom Caps is the definition of consistency. In Utica Home Track Series, he's been running, like, top five most of the year. He rarely has a bad run. Exactly. Here, he's been doing really good. He's been having a lot of top-notch efforts. Uh, only place he did poorly was uh, Kansas. Though everyone did poorly there. I don't think anyone did good at Kansas, honestly. I mean, you were lucky to finish the race at Kansas. Oh, man. You were lucky to get past the first turn at Kansas. Oh, my God. But coming to the line, a 54.02. Top five time. Excellent run by him. Nick Pericles, another one of our new drivers for Rising Motorsports. And it makes sense. He's a rising star. He is a rising star. Let's see how he does. He replaces Kyle Sosnowski, hoping to have a little better mojo than Kyle Sosnowski. Because yeah, he wasn't really... Sosnowski had a lot of trouble. He couldn't really make the uh, change to stock car, well, from stock cars onto uh, these rally cars. It's a different change. It's a very, very different um, array of driving, and a lot of people can't make it. Especially because there isn't really a place where you oh, can Oh! Oh! But he managed whoa. to flip himself over, but I don't think you can get back on. Uh, he's going to have to make an effort here, but uh, that's one of those wrecks where he now knows, all right, this is a serious series. He's got to take himself seriously here. Oh, he hit the tree. Oh, Gonna get stuck on some of the foliage nearby. It's a little chilly out today. 
A little bit. Um, by the way, oh. you see, there's been a couple of flurries. Uh, we don't need it. Okay, you know, it's still better than Alcor and Pike, okay? We well, need- yeah, it's because it's no. Now I'm gonna Northwest complain. Territory. Now I'm going to complain of how cold it is. You, you jerk. <laughs> hey, it's not that bad out. It's mostly been kind of boggy. Steve? But, uh... Steve, where's my hot chocolate, Steve? <laughs> Steve. Thanks. Oh, man, something? don't you love interns? I know. I mean, he's going to be... doing it for college credit. <laughs> Good thing Steve's studying abroad, my yeah, God. I, I know. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, what a bloke. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Pericles coming to the line. A, a minute 24, 85. Poor effort, but this hey, is his debut. What? He did better than John Cernodino. <laughs> yeah, he did. And uh, Now we have Adam just- Dunlap, the drunk man on campus. <laughs> Adam Dunlap, he's cleaned up his act after that one amazing run at yes. a little place we call <laughs> the Everglades. The Everglades. Yes, uh, I believe after that, I think he was like being weird near some alligators, so uh, they had to really step in there. So... <laughs> But uh, Adam Dunlap, he's been uh, oh. he's been seeking some help. He's been going to uh, rehab, rehab, and the uh, therapy sessions, doing some community service for uh, what he did to that alligator. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but he's back in the car and looking pretty decent. He hit that cheat, or not really a cheat, but basically a little loop, you know, a little cut, and hit it pretty smoothly. Might put him in the top five if he finishes cleanly for the rest of this run. Yeah, this is a very competitive time, and uh, Dunlap's really cleaned up his act and uh, a fifty-two ninety-six. That's an wow. excellent time that for is. him. Third place. And it's just doing well. Now it's time for the Russian rocket, Vladimir Petrov, who's uh, trying to turn things around. He's still in that slump. And I, I kind of want him to get out of that slump. I want him to feel good about himself. I want him to get some motivation and confidence. He already got kind of knocked down this week. Uh, yeah. He failed to qualify Ooh. for Myrtle Beach after they took him out of the 09 car and put him in a fourth-tier team in the 02 machine. Let me just mention, when he came off that loop right there, he hit the wall, but the way he hit the wall, it like, projected him like a rocket. <laughs> Oh, oh cut, well, can he get himself back on? I don't think he can. Oh, oh it's going to be close. No, the oh, rear tires just not, barely. He might be able to do the backup method because your rear tires because they're a lot a lot bigger. They can they have a little more grip when they're going upward. Or, I mean going in reverse for some reason. And he's trying to hear. I don't think he realizes that he uh, can't that's get back not on. Not the right place to do it, Vlad. And uh, yep, it's completely thrown off. He's going to actually go through the jump again and uh I don't even think he can make this the is, jump. This is going to be a rough jump and oh. he just makes it. Yep, Petrov is having a rough time of it. The Russian rocket failed to launch. Yet again, man. Yeah. This has been really rough. He's got to really get it, get it in gear. Or else, I don't know, he's probably not going to win this championship, I don't think. I know it's early, but it, I'm not I'm not feeling it from him. Yeah. He's, I don't think he's going to be close to it. Here we go. Last couple of turns just to end off this run. This has been really disappointing. A minute 24-20. Let me just say something. <laughs> yes. He did better than John Cedino. And Colin Bartel as <laughs> Matt Duell gets on track. The replacinator, which really his name doesn't really suit him anymore. He doesn't have to replace anybody because he is a man himself, and he is top of the points, doing an amazing job this season. Coming halfway through the season last year, we didn't know what to expect from him. We liked his personality, liked his driving skills. We didn't know he would be such a prominent driver this season. Yes, and he's such a friendly face to have around the garage area. He's, all, he's really happy. He's oh, just, oh, no! Every and, time we talk oh, good about the, du- the That is a shame for Matt Duel, and he's going to finish dead last. And now it's time for uh, the last of the debut drivers, Diego Ruiz, the Spanish driver. Ooh, um, a little Spanish uh, flair. Now, we don't go to Spain on the circuit, but we the closest I think we're going is probably St. Denis, France, next yep. week. Mm-hmm. So uh, he's hoping that these kind of races here on the uh, western side of Europe that they're they're kind of he can uh, attract some of the home crowd. What I've heard from though from Spain though they're actually very, this is kind of they're, they're, they love driving on um, different road conditions and they're really good at adjusting depending on the circumstances. And I think Diego Ruiz might be a pretty good driver in this series. Yep, that is the generalization of all of Spain. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, Diego Ruiz, a really top notch driver. I've seen his skills before. He's been he's run open wheel before, so he's used to these kind of cars. I've also seen him run in some rally races. Yeah. In fact, he races everything. I've even seen him on a dirt bike a couple of times wow. driving. Wow. So, uh, Diego Ruiz, uh, he, wow. he knows... <laughs> yeah, wow, you were enthralled <laughs> as a 5642. Not going to be the best, but it's first time in the vehicle, and now it's time for the shaft. The shaft. Shaft. Richard the Shaft Johnson. You gotta have shaft. Dump, 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 dump,
All right. Wow. But yeah, Richard Johnson, great face. So you said that you uh, met him at Big Ben. I did meet him at Big Ben, which I thought was hilarious. We kind of had some laughs, and I'm gonna. I, we said things that we, I should not be saying on the air right now. Our producer would probably not appreciate it whatsoever. He's gripping his clipboard very tightly right you, now. You show me that picture that uh, you you guys took. Uh, you took a perspective shot. He was laying down far enough away from Big Ben. So that, oh, that was oh, funny. Richard Johnson. <laughs> oh yeah, we did take that picture. Um, we, yeah. I, uh, per, hey, uh, Steve. It made its way to Twitter, didn't it? Yeah. 53-72, a great run by Richard Johnson at top five, and uh, the power of Big Ben with him. <laughs> yeah, the power of Big Ben is with him. <laughs> and now it's time for our final driver up today, and it's a shame. We've been having a fun uh, I think, yeah, outing so far. I know. Seth Cole, the stuntman, and he's loving this loop. He, I know, his, his his eyes are probably, his eyes flared up. I saw him when he walked in. He's like, I was talking to him all week, and he just said, I can't wait to do that loop. Can't yeah, wait to do that yeah. loop. He, he was wishing for practice time. I know, exactly. He was hoping for rainy conditions just so that we could have a practice session. He was like, I want to do that loop. Actually, he was, the, oh, everyone finally was done for the day. He was just, I heard him going, Wee! <laughs> He was going over the loop and loop and loop and loop and loop. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, on Seth Cole, having a okay run at the moment. Things yeah. are going pre- pretty well for him. He was excited this weekend and, uh,. He's hoping the best for his driver, uh, Joseph Bryan. He failed to qualify for the Myrtle Beach event, but his driver is going to be competing to get the top 35 spot. And here comes the final driver of the day, the final finish at 54.91. A pretty decent time for Seth Cole. Yeah, great time. Let's take a look at our final race results as Dylan Young wow. is going to be your winner. So congratulations to Dylan Young, who we it looks like... Young in age and young in time. It looks like he's become a man now. Yes, he has. That Jake Williams was in second with a great time. Adam Dunlap, Richard Johnson, and Michael O'Reilly rounding out the top five. Great top five. Dom Caps, Kevin White, Seth Cole, Thomas Beattie in wow, his debut, an exceptional yeah. effort, and Joseph Bryan rounding out your top ten. Now we get the cream machine, Alex Tanker. Diego Rue is pretty good for his first run. Matt Evans, Todd Benoit. William Duncan, Emily Michaels, you know, these guys did they did a pretty good day today for overall. Chris Aurelio, David Voyles, Ray Davis, and Emil Michaels running at your top 20. Yes, and then the last five were Vladimir Petrov, Nick Pericles, who had rough times. John Sadino, Colin Bartel, and Matt Evans all failed to finish. Matt Duel. Matt Duel, my apologies. Oh, yeah. All failed to finish the race. Let's take a look at what your standings look like now. And on top, it is still... Tyler Benoit. Benoit with 108 points. Three what? points over wow. Adam Dunlap, though. Dunlap is catching up despite then, his troubles. And then Matt Evans in third. He has a really powerful top three. Joseph Bryant's up there. Wow. Also in competition. Dom Capps is close along with Jake Williams. Richard Jake Johnson. Williams. Yeah, Jake Williams. Jake Williams is working his way up. Michael Aurelio had a good run this time. Emily Michaels in ninth. And Matt Duell rounds out your top ten. And we got Kevin White doing a pretty good job. Billy Bishop, which isn't in the race event, is in twelfth. Chris Aurelio, Ray Davis, Alex Tanker, Seth Cole... Colin Bartell, surprisingly in the 17th. John Cedino in 18th. Kyle Sosnowski and Dylan Young running at your top 20. Yes, he was so far behind. Even the wind and only got him into the top 20. Here goes the rest of your field. As you see a lot of our uh, new drivers, a yeah. lot of drivers that are struggling, a lot of drivers that are no longer in the sport. Nick Pericles currently last in points, but he's got a lot more I'm opportunities Thomas, to gain some more. Thomas Beatty had a great run for his first day. It was great. Yes, excellent show for him. Next up, we're going to St. Denis in France. Should be a great race. We should oui, oui. we'll, Yeah. We oui, we oui, we'll see you there. <laughs> see you later. Adios.